They say that the only certainties in life are death and taxes, but science is full of constants, which we can be sure of. There's the speed of light in a vacuum, the gravitational constant, the Planck constant, and the elementary charge, to name just a few. But of all the constants in the universe, there is one that excites physicists more than any other. It has sometimes been jokingly referred to as the answer to life, the universe, and everything, but it's not a 42, it's 1 137th. If we're being technical, it's 1 in 137.035999084, but 137 is close enough. This number shows up everywhere in quantum physics, and it became an obsession of many of the founders of quantum mechanics. It's a number that Richard Feynman described as being one of the greatest damn mysteries of physics, and a magic number that was written by the hand of God. Paul Dirac called it the most fundamental unsolved problem in physics, and Wolfgang Pauli stated, When I die, my first question to the devil will be, what is the meaning of the fine structure constant? So what exactly is 1 137th? How was it discovered? Why is it so damn important? So, the fine structure constant, also known as the Summerfield constant, is a fundamental constant of physics that quantifies the strength between charged particles and the electromagnetic force. The discovery of this constant began in 1887, when Albert Michelson and Edward Morley took precise measurements of the hydrogen atom spectrum. When elements shift energy levels in their orbit around a nucleus, they emit photons with specific energies. By breaking that energy up into specific wavelengths of light, we can produce the spectrum for that particular atom, and atoms of each element have their own unique spectrum. But as we gained the ability to take even more precise measurements, it was discovered that there were a couple of problems. First, the energies measured in the spectrum analysis didn't quite line up with the expected values from our calculations. This meant that something in our equations had to be off. Moreover, it was discovered that each line in the spectrogram was actually two separate lines that were very close together. These pairs of nearly identical lines are known as fine structures. In a 1916 paper, German physicist Arnold Summerfield observed that the difference between these two lines was always a multiple of a specific number. He named this number the fine structure constant, denoted by the Greek letter alpha, and the number was represented by the equation that's on the screen now. This formula actually includes some of the constants that we already mentioned. E is the elementary charge, epsilon sub zero is the electric constant, H bar is the reduced Planck constant, and C is the speed of light. And pi is, of course, just pi. Since these are all constants, we can plug their values in and we get approximately 1 137th. That by itself wouldn't necessarily be enough to excite physicists. The whole point of these constants is that they show up in equations like this all the time. What interested physicists so much was that 1 137th is the only thing we get. Now there's a glaring omission in that answer, which is the lack of units of measurement. C is expressed in meters per second and E is expressed in columns, but all of the units of measurement in this equation cancel out, making the fine structure constant dimensionless. It's just a number, making it more similar to pi than to the other constants in that equation. While it isn't the only dimensionless constant in physics, it's the one that has most captivated scientists' imaginations. Most of the other dimensionless constants are just the weights of various types of quarks and leptons and such, which are far more useful than they are interesting. And if the fine structure constant only showed up as the difference between these pairs of spectral lines, it likely would have been little more than a fun bit of trivia. However, as studies in quantum physics progressed, the number began to appear everywhere. This number began showing up in countless different equations governing light and matter. That's how the number was discovered. But despite over a century of physicists obsessing about it, we're still no closer to understanding its significance. So why does 1 137th appear to be the most important number in quantum physics. While the fine structure constant has its specific uses, there's no obvious reason that this number would continue to show up in as many places as it does. To date, we don't actually have an answer for this. 137 is a prime number that doesn't appear to be tied to any other mathematical constants, and we have no real explanation for its origin. That led many physicists down the failed path of numerology to try and find an explanation. This was especially prevalent at the beginning of the 20th century, when the fine structure constant was believed to be exactly 1 in 137, rather than just approximately that number. At one point, English physicist Sir Arthur Eddington argued that the number should be exactly 1 136, because 
He had calculated the number of protons in the universe to be 136 times 2 to the power of 256. It's no longer believed that those calculations have anything to do with one another, but that's an example of the sort of superstition that some early quantum physicists were dealing with. Currently, there isn't any theory we can use to predict the value of the fine structure constant. It's the sort of constant whose value can only be determined by measuring it in experiments, and we must just use that measurement to make other predictions about the universe without any understanding of why the value is the number that it is. So, we don't have any explanation for where this number came from, but is the number even that important? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. As we said earlier, the fine constant structure quantifies the strength of the electromagnetic force. Everything we experience in our day-to-day -day lives is governed by either gravity or electromagnetism. And life could simply not exist in the universe if that constant were even just slightly different. If the number were higher or lower, it would alter how tightly electrons were bound to their nuclei, making atoms either smaller or larger. Currently, the value is low enough, meaning the electromagnetic force is weaker enough that atoms are mostly filled with empty space. Electrons orbit far enough away to enable chemical bonding. If the force was stronger, then these chemical reactions may not be possible, or at the very least, all of chemistry would be dramatically different. On the other hand, if the fine structure constants were lower, resulting in a weaker electromagnetic force, electrons would orbit further away, making atoms and molecules unstable. It's estimated that if the constant were to change just 4% in either direction, the stars wouldn't have been able to fuse carbon atoms together, thus making life as we know it impossible. If the force became even weaker, then fusion wouldn't be possible at all, and there would be no stars. Like so many things in our universe, the fine structure constant seems perfectly tuned to enable life. Of course, there is the caveat. These discussions always refer to life as we know it, and it's possible that a wildly different universe would have wildly different types of life. But again, physics is full of all sorts of constants, and what makes this one so particularly interesting is that it's dimensionless. Take the speed of light, for example. This is usually approximated to be 300,000 kilometers a second, though some people prefer to use 186,000 miles a second. If you're feeling particularly silly, you could even say that Raleigh travels at 5.4 million furlongs per regulation hockey game. In these cases, the number itself is meaningless, and it's just a byproduct of the units of measurement that we use to define it. And when you consider that a kilometer is internationally defined as the distance that light travels in one 300,000th of a second, it creates this weird bit of circular logic within the definitions. That's why the dimensionless aspect of the fine structure constant is so fascinating to physicists. Similar to pi, it's a pure number that simply exists in nature without the need to be defined by any sort of human perspective. It's even been argued that 1 137th is the perfect message to broadcast to aliens to show them that we are a form of intelligent life. If we were to send them the gravitational constant, we would also need to include an explanation of what the hell a meter, a second, and a kilogram all are. But 1 137th speaks for itself. We would probably want to transmit it in binary instead of base 10, but if an advanced alien civilization were to receive that number as a message from us, they would know that we had at least something of an understanding of quantum physics. Okay, so we've talked about how important the value of the fine structure constant is and the devastating consequences that could arise if it were changed even slightly. However, it's not quite as constant as we've made it sound thus far. It actually changes, increasing logarithmically as the relevant energy scale increases. At the time of the Big Bang, when the energy scale was massively high, the value of the fine structure constant would have approached 1. But since the universe tries to achieve the lowest energy state possible, this value quickly dropped. While there isn't any known reason why it didn't just fall to 0, the constant instead seems to be asymptotic at 1 137th as energy approaches zero, which is good since we wouldn't exist if it didn't. This detail is hugely important for the potential creation of a grand unified theory of physics, and we've made a whole video about that if you'd like a more in-depth explanation. But it's known that at high enough energy levels, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force act as a single force, and the variable nature of the fine structure constant can help explain that. In fact, there are a lot of open questions regarding the formation of the universe and the standard model of physics that could potentially be solved by a variable constant. And this has led to the controversial belief that the fine structure constant may actually be very variable throughout time and space, and that the value of 1 137th is only true in our small pocket of the universe. Scientists got to work trying to prove that the constant could be variable in time and space rather than just at higher levels. This was done using spectrographic analysis, both of quasars because of their incredible brightness, and with stars that are nearly identical to our own sun. And the results have been 
astonishingly inconclusive. Analysis of solar twins showed no variation in the fine structure constant, but to get proper readings from a star as unremarkable as our own sun, it needs to be relatively close. If the theory is that the constant changes over time or in different parts of the universe, getting readings from stars that are only hundreds or thousands of light years away wasn't very likely to show any real difference in the first place. However, the results from the quasars are much more interesting because they allowed us to gather data from much further away. In 1999, a team out of the University of South Wales claimed to discover the first variation in the fine structure constant by analyzing the spectra of stars from 10 to 12 billion years ago. The measured result was slightly lower than the value had previously measured. It was a tiny difference, but it was definitely there. Years later, the same team tried again, but this time they took measurements looking in the opposite direction. What they found was a constant that was a tiny bit higher in that direction. Now, of course, this still isn't conclusive. The changes were small enough that they could have been experimental errors, signal noise, or uh, they could have even been caused by gas clouds having a highly unusual ratio of isotopes. Furthermore, it's a bit convenient that this team found the exact results they were looking for with different variations in different directions, while other teams failed to find any variation in their measurements of the fine structure constant. It's convenient, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. While the prevailing opinion is that the discrepancy was just signal noise, the research has yet to be properly discredited. Currently, we just don't have a definitive answer on exactly how constant the fine structure constant is, though if it is variable through time and space, this could have major implications. So, Eunice measurements are an important part of most constants because they give us a frame of reference for the relationship represented by that constant. The speed of light is the relationship between distance and time. Planck's constant is the relationship between joules and time. And the gravitational constant is the relationship between mass, distance, and time. So if the fine structure constant is dimensionless, what is the relationship that this number is meant to represent? Perhaps it is the relationship between these other constants and how they interact to create the universe around us. Or maybe it's just an arbitrary number number with no particular meaning. After all, it's easy to make a formula using various constants that will be dimensionless, like dividing the mass of a helium atom and the mass of a hydrogen atom. But what makes the fine structure constant more intriguing than other such numbers is that it shows up everywhere. It is literally the glue that holds the universe together, because without the electromagnetic force, you would just pass through other matter, assuming the molecules in your body were even held together in the first place. While we understand the importance of the constant as a measurable value that we can use in equations, it's probably best not to continue to search for specific meaning in the number 1 137th. It's just one of many random values that were selected at the beginning of the universe, and the fact that every one of those random values happens to be exactly perfect for the creation of life is probably just a coincidence that we shouldn't worry too much about.